Today we're going to talk about how to read the periodic table, ions and isotopes. When you see the short form of an element, it will tell you the entire structure for that type of atom in only two numbers. So if we think about lithium, so there's our symbol for lithium and it will have two numbers, say a seven there and a three underneath. Now, this three is called the atomic number and it is vital, it is, that is the identity of lithium. This three here tells you how many protons the, that particular element has. And in this case, it's three. And any atom that has three protons is going to be lithium. So that three is tells us that we have our, our three protons. So let's draw that here. And then we've got this seven. Now the seven tells us how many things there are in the nucleus of this lithium. So we, at the moment, we've drawn three things in, but we know that in total, there must be seven because lithium has, a, has an atomic mass of seven. So we've got three here and it ends up being seven. So what do we add to three to get to seven? Well, four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is what the nucleus of a lithium looks like. Three protons and four neutrons. Now, we can also tell how many electrons there must be because lithium is an atom and atoms always have the same number of protons as electrons. So if there are three protons, there must be three electrons. So here's our first two electrons. And in the outer shell, the last one. So three protons, three electrons, because it's an atom and it's electrically neutral. No overall charge. Must be three protons because it has an atomic number of three. Has a mass of seven. So the difference in, in number must be the number of neutrons and there are four neutrons there. Let's, uh, let's try running through that with a different element, shall we? Carbon has a mass number of 12. Atomic number of six. Let's pause for a second. Can you imagine how many protons there are in carbon? Yep, you're right. There are six. So here's our six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, how many neutrons? Well, what's the difference between six and 12? 12 minus six, that's uh, 12 minus six. That's gonna equal six. So there must be six neutrons. So let's draw those in. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Has a nucleus with a mass of 12, and six of those are protons. Last but not least, how many electrons? Well, it has to be the same number as the protons, so it's six electrons. That's good, and then we know that that follows the two, eight, eight rule. So let's fill in those two to start with. One, two. Then we can have up to eight. Now we're not gonna need all eight because there's only six here. So we put two in, we're left with another four to place. So. There we go, that's carbon. And that's how you read, that's how you give the identity of an atom with just two numbers. The atomic mass and the atomic number. What if you don't have the same number of protons as electrons? Well, instead of having an atom, you have something else. I'll start with drawing an atom of chlorine. Atomic mass. For now, we'll just say 35, but you'll see why that's not quite true uh, in a later video. So chlorine has a mass of 35 and it has an atomic 
number of 17. Much larger nucleus this time. So if there are 17 protons, then there will be 17 electrons. We're still going to follow the 288 eight rule. Let's see how far we get. So we now have equal numbers of protons and electrons. So this is still an atom. This is a chlorine atom. Atoms don't always stay atoms. For instance, when they form chemical bonds, uh, for, such as ionic bonds, an atom like this could gain one extra electron. I'm going to draw that in in orange. And if it did so, this, this chlorine would become much more stable. Therefore, you're more likely to find chlorine uh, having already formed an ionic bond than as, pure, as a pure chlorine atom. So this here is an ion because it has one extra electron. Okay, you can also have ions formed the other way. If we have lithium with three protons and what well, this time uh, and four neutrons, this time it has two electrons and the third electron has been given away to another particle. In this case, it has a full outer shell. It's more stable, and you're likely to come across this in the environment chemically. Maybe it's something like lithium, uh, lithium sulfide or, or lithium chloride. Um, so this is more stable, but it now only has two electrons, but three protons. So the number of protons does not equal the number of electrons. Therefore, we call this an ion. Now. For this ion, it has less negative charge than it has positive charge, so this is a positive ion. And all the metals form positive ions. I'm not going to go into that in any more detail at this point, otherwise we're going to end up studying chemistry, and this is a physics topic. Let's say we're looking at hydrogen. Hydrogen actually comes in three different types. All of them are hydrogen, and they all act the same in chemical reactions. So you can have hydrogen 1, 1. So we know how to read these. It has a mass of 1, so it has one thing in the nucleus. And it has an atomic number of 1. So that one thing in the nucleus is a proton. So we have hydrogen 1, 1. And it looks something like this, with its one proton in the middle and one electron around the outside. So this, this has a particular name. It's called proteum. But, or hydrogen one. It can be called e either in either style. So we can call it hydrogen one or proteum. Okay, another uh, variety that, that hydrogen come in, what we call another isotope of hydrogen, is hydrogen two one. So this can be called hydrogen two, Um, it has another name. It can be called deuterium. Deuter in, I think, Latin, but I could be wrong, means two. Um, protium, pro, means first or one. So you have one, two, which kind of makes sense with the names at the top as well. And if we were to draw this one, at least there's a third isotope of hydrogen. I think you can guess it. It's going to be called hydrogen Three. It has a mass of three and one proton. And this one is called tritium, which again, you can see the pattern in the names there. Tri, triple, triad means three. Okay, well, I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments or come see me in, in school tomorrow. Goodbye.